XGen Interactive Grooming allows you to create and style hair or fur using intuitive brush-based tools. This is not to be confused with the older manual groomable splines found in the Create XGen description window. These are not compatible with the interactive tools, though it is easy to convert default splines to interactive grooming hairs. To create an interactive groom, first select the mesh or mesh faces on which to generate it. Next, go to the Modeling menu set and select Generate Create Interactive Groom Splines. This automatically opens the XGen Interactive Groom Editor, which shows you the groom's base description along with two default modifiers. The sculpt houses and allows you to edit the layers that will blend the effects of the various sculpt tools. You can create additional layers to separate sculpt effects, then switch between the active one by clicking on their respective edit buttons which turn red when active. The scale controls the global scale of all hairs in the groom. You can select any of these nodes and switch to the Attribute Editor to view their attributes, but it's easier to use the XGen Interactive Groom workspace, which displays them both at once. You'll generally want to start your grooms by adjusting some global description settings. In this case, we'll reduce the overall width scale and increase the taper to make the primitives look more hair-like. Also increase the overall density multiplier in the base node to thicken the hair up. And increase the overall scale to give yourself a good starting point. You can keep track of the number of hairs, the current active sculpt layer, and other useful information via the XGen HUD. Now you can use the various brushes in the XGen shelf or the Generate Interactive Groom Tools menu to style the hair. Use the comb and grab brushes to create the initial shape by dragging the cursor to change the direction of the hairs. You can turn on symmetry in the tool settings to affect the mesh on both sides. To avoid hairs penetrating the scalp geometry, enable Collide with Meshes. You can also adjust the size and strength of the brushes here, but it's quicker and more interactive to hold B or M in the interface and drag the mouse left and right or up and down respectively. To create a part, use the freeze tool to mask out hair on one side of the head. Then comb the remaining hair away from it with symmetry off. Repeat on the opposite side. You can then use the smooth tool to blend between the different areas. Although our initial groom looks pretty good, it's obvious that the hair arrangement is too uniform. Break up the uniformity by adding a noise modifier in the XGen Interactive Groom Editor. This applies noise to all the hairs at once. Just remember that the order of the modifiers will affect the results, so consider whether you want to add noise to the base description before grooming or after your initial groom. If you want to apply noise to a specific area instead, you'll want to use the Noise tool. We recommend doing this on a different sculpt layer. In general, it's wise to layer effects like this on top of your basic groom so that you can adjust their strength values to show or hide their effects. Other effects you may want to consider layering include clumping to reproduce the way hairs intertwine and clump up, and trimming or lengthening.
Note that thickening or thinning via the density or width tool is not a layerable effect. You can shift right click while any of these tools is active to quickly switch to another tool via the marking menu. Just make sure the appropriate layer is active each time. Finally, to change the color of your groom, simply adjust the attributes of its hair physical shader node. When satisfied with the groom, Render an Arnold for the best results.